It is a creature that lives in a land of towering cliffs and perpetual snows, a place where nature pushes the elements to the limit. These rugged peaks of the northern Rockies are home to the mountain goat. They appear suddenly and silently, like ghosts, colored in the snowy shades of winter. This shaggy beast was a mystery to the early explorers. Some thought it was a white buffalo because of its strong, muscled forequarters and narrow rump. Lewis and Clark believed it was another form of mountain sheep, similar to the bighorns they had already encountered on their journey. And Captain James Cook, trading pelts with the Indians, concluded that it was the coat of the white bear. Because they were adapted to living in such rugged, remote areas, it was natural that the mountain goat would appear mysterious. But this habitat is also their defense. Sheer, craggy cliffs stretch skyward to rocky peaks, forming a home carved from granite. This is their habitat, food, water, shelter, and space. Few other animals can move around so easily in these rugged, rocky peaks. It is their key to survival because here, in this difficult terrain, they can avoid competition from other animals that would eat the same foods. And the clear view from a mountain peak makes it difficult for a predator to surprise the wild goat. They also blend well with this habitat. From a distance, they appear to be a large boulder or snowbank merging with the surroundings. Until they move, they're very difficult to see. But set against a bright summer sky, the mountain goat is clearly visible. Classically posed on the edge of a chasm, she surveys the world below. By early summer, most of the females have already given birth. Their winter coats hang in long, ragged tatters as they jostle each other for position among the rocks. There's a hierarchy here, and dominance is established by threatening gestures and a certain amount of pushing. Even though goats live together in groups, they seem to need a bit of space around them. As a rule, the females dominate the males, and the rest of the pecking order appears to have a lot to do with size and age. The animal with the lowest status is last year's offspring, the small yearling goats. They hold bottom rank. But the newborn kids are pretty well protected. Occasionally, a female will make a move to push away one that is not her offspring. But generally, the smallest goats are free to romp among the adult population. These newborns will stay with their mothers through winter. But by next spring, they will be shunted aside as the females prepare to give birth to a new baby goat. A female does not produce her first kid until the age of three. Usually, she'll have one, although sometimes, when food has been plentiful, she'll have twins or triplets. If the young offspring manages to evade the occasional mountain lion in its first summer, it has a good chance of reaching adulthood. The factors that seem to affect goat populations the most are weather patterns, accidents like snow slides, or falls from a cliff, and changes in habitat. A healthy mountain goat population will have goats from every age group, kids, yearlings, two-year-olds, and adult males and females. Goats have never been plentiful. Since their habitat is limited to areas like this, high rocky outcrops, their numbers stay naturally low. In the summer, the goat spends part of the day pawing, licking and crunching the deteriorating rocks and gravel of the peak, seeking the salt and minerals their bodies require. During the heat of the day, the insects become intolerable. The goats, like other animals on the peak, try to discourage the pests by covering their bodies with dust. Their white coats dulled with dirt they retreat from the hot midday sun into the shady forest that shelters the remaining snow. These snowbanks draw goats in the summertime. During the heat of the day, the goats rest directly on the snowbanks to keep cool, and the melting snow provides a source of water for the animals. Moreover, that water also produces succulent vegetation. This new growth and various other grasses are the goats' summertime food. The males lose their winter coats early leaving tufts of white hair suspended in pine branches and trailing on shrubs. 
Their slicked off bodies disclose enormous shoulder muscles and powerful chests. But the female is slower to shed. It is thought that this may have something to do with the fact that she's nursing a kid. Her general condition isn't as good as a male's due to the stress on her system. As a result, her new hair isn't growing as fast and forcing out the old winter coat. Also, the long ragged hair makes her appear larger and bigger coats have a more social rank. This dominance gives the nursing female and her offspring better opportunity to choose the top feeding spots. This time of year, it's fairly easy to distinguish between the males and the females in a group. Aside from the telltale shaggy coat, the fact that most of the females are nursing has caused their swollen mammary glands to be clearly visible. But in the winter, it can be a different story. The sex organs are hidden by longer hair, so the only reliable characteristic is a slight difference in the horns. The males are much thicker at the base and sweep up into an arc. The female's horns have less bulk and hook about three inches from the end. Horns and hoof are the mountain goat's security. Few animals have the dexterity to climb the sheer, precarious face of a mountain. The center of a mountain goat's hoof is very soft and spongy. These pads can grip the surface of rocks, working somewhat like a suction cup. It makes it look easy for the wild goat to climb nearly straight up and down a peak. These adaptations make it possible for mountain goats to live on the roof of the world. In addition to keeping the species relatively safe from predators, it also allows them to live in a place where they have very little competition from other large animals like elk or moose. The wild goats don't have to share the limited grasses and shrubs that grow at these high elevations, and this can be critical in the winter months. Once the snow blankets the high country, the deer and the elk follow the path of a thousand years, journeying to the more forgiving territory of lower elevations. But the mountain goat stays, seeking habitat too severe for these other animals. The wild goats look for areas that shed snow, then feed on whatever's available shrubs, grasses, fir trees. A harsh winter or poor food supply can result in a high death rate for the younger animals. During this time, goats tend to gather in small groups of three or four that stay in one place. It appears that they survive in these harsh conditions by remaining relatively still and conserving energy, rather than looking extensively for food. The world of the mountain goat seems magical, perched high above the earth on the craggy cliffs of the northern Rocky Mountains. It's a difficult place to live, but for the mountain goat, it has everything the animal requires. Food, water, shelter, and space. And one very incredible view.